Welcome to the Programming Electronics Academy podcast. Join us every other week as we explore how everyday people are creating extraordinary things in the world. Find us online at programmingelectronics.com. Hello, this is Michael with Programming Electronics Academy. Welcome. So what are we doing today? Well, I had the pleasure of speaking with Brian Thompson. And he's a smuggler of sorts, a smuggler in the Star Wars sense. He's going to talk about his endeavors building astromech droids. And let me tell you, it's pretty sweet. So if you like Star Wars, you like electronics and programming, I think you're probably going to enjoy this show. I sure did. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right in. All right. Well, welcome, Brian, for uh, talking tonight. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Yeah. So we met through Programming Electronics Academy, and um, it, you know, I was just curious about what projects you were working on, and then you sent me a picture of a droid, and my like jaw dropped to the ground. I'm like, what? And when I say droid, you know, everybody's going to Star Wars, and it is Star Wars, but it's like just a straight up hardcore, awesome looking droid. And of course, you know, you were showing that showing off kind of the LEDs that you had working on it and stuff with your Arduino and stuff. So it was like, oh man, I have got to talk to Brian and, you know, learn more about this. So if you could, you know, I'm just curious um, if you could explain how you got into building droids and, and into electronics and, and that type of stuff. Yeah, absolutely. The, the droid building uh, really started as, as a kid. You know, gr- growing up with Star Wars, and and my father was a pretty hands-on guy, and he did he did electronics the old school way, from scratch and solder breadboards and and whatnot. So we did a lot of that kind of stuff as a kid, and then as I got older, we decided that we were going to join the uh, Astromech Builders Club. It's basically a group of guys for for many years now that have just literally built life-size one-to-one replicas of everything from R2-D2 to the obscure droids that you see in the movies. And um, at first it was kind of a hobby of, well, let's just build it and we'll have a static prop that sits in the corner of a room and it'll look great and whatnot. But the reality was uh, if it moves, it's even better. If it has lights, it's even better. So you can really bring it to life. And that's kind of what got us into Arduino and, and, and programming and building the circuits for it and everything. So I guess from there, we just kind of decided, or at least I did, that uh, I I didn't want just an R2-D2 replica, which I have one, um, but I I wanted to kind of use that that universe that Lucas created in 77 and just kind of expand on it and take recognizable things, but make them my own. So uh, on this last build, it's been a little nutty. We just kind of went over the top with it, so... So kind of doing it alongside your father, that's really neat. So what what is this current build you're working on, or the last build you're working on? Can you can you tell me some more? Yeah. So most most replicas from the Builders Club are, are full scale one to one, and they and they can they can weigh any, upwards of three hundred pounds or more, depending wow. on what they're made from. Uh, they're really hard to transport, and these poor guys that have to move them all over the country when they go to conventions and whatnot, you know, they're running trailers and RVs, you name it, to try to get their stuff. So we actually did a two third scale is kind of our bread and butter. We, my, uh, my father actually sculpted most of it out of wood and whatever. And then we made molds and then that way we could reproduce them in resin. So we're getting ready for the, the, uh, star Wars celebration in Orlando. And, um, we thought, well, we need to take a bunch down there. So we've got, you know, a regular R2-D2 replica. And then um, we kind of nicknamed mine uh, L3-FTY, which is a really geeky way of saying lefty because we built them from a bunch of leftover parts. And so every <laughs> every little part I could find became, you know, well, we'll put that on lefty because it's uh, he's got all the leftover parts anyway. But, and you know, they're full functional. I, I, uh, my father built a, a minion astromech for my mother because she's, you know, she's just as much a nerd as the rest of us. So we thought, well, we'll have all these really weird, unique little short droids running all over the Star Wars celebration this year. Like when I think of a convention of these, is it, how many are we talking about? Like tens of them? Uh, oh, there'll be hundreds at this, at this show. I, I think they said that this year will be the most 
the most people they've had come out. So, you know, you'll have a room, they, they have a whole section that they put just for the Astromech Builders Club that they'll probably have a hundred or more. And uh, just about every single one of them is ran with an Arduino processor as the base and using, using the code that, uh, using that code structure for everything, uh, for all the movement, the lights, the sounds, the works. Oh, wow. That's cool. So can you give me an idea? I mean, I can, I kind of have an idea of, you know, I've seen Star Wars, obviously. Um, and I have an idea of some of the movements and stuff that a droid would do, but, um, I don't know. Can you kind of talk about some of the things they do do mechanically and just light wise or? Yeah, sure. From the, from the most basic standpoint, um, obviously there's a, a motor that, that rotates the dome, you know, spins it all the way around. Um, and then there's, uh, motors that are put into the foot shells on a full size droid. Uh, they're using scooter motors and things like that. Cause obviously they're moving a lot of weight. Um, uh, growing up in my household and, and one of the things from our little smugglers room website is that we've built, been building something out of nothing. That's kind of our motto. So when my dad said, well, our, our foot shells are really small. He decided to take a little trip to the junkyard, the automotive junkyard and started pulling out various motors from seat motors, you know, like, you know, just out of your, out of the cars that have been Oh, abandoned. right, right. Okay. Yeah. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. So he found that, uh, I believe it's a 1993 Tahoe. The seat motor is perfect size for our particular droid build and they fit inside the foot shells and they have enough torque that it moves it around. Actually, it's surprising when you sit in a car and you move back and forth, you don't realize you know, the seat moves up and back and it's nice and slow. But when you put it in these little guys and you, and you crank it up, they, they can take off on you. They go a little fast. It's a little, it's a little scary that a little seat motor like that could actually go that quick. But so yeah, we get the dome motion uh, and we get the, the foot motors to move so that he, you know, drives around, spins around and does that kind of thing. Um, but the crazy thing is that's, that's just the beginning level of, of what I've seen with these builders uh, they have, you know, automatic doors on the body of the droid and in the movies, you know, his little door opens and a little arm comes out and he interfaces with something. So, you know, these builders for years have just kept raising the bar and they've, now they've got them where all the doors open, the little arms on the front of the body will open, the the domes on these guys will, all the little, they call them pies, if you ever look at the top of a R2-D2, his Top of his dome looks like he has a bunch of little pies and they'll open and, you know, periscopes come out or whatever, whatever they can come up with, they'll make it happen so that it becomes truly animated, if you will. Wow. Now, do do people treasure these as like their own personal trade secrets or when you go to these, are you guys kind of like sharing, how'd you do that type stuff or, or is it just different with different people? Uh, you know, that's the that was kind of the biggest reason I got into this group was because they've been doing this now since the mid '80s, but they've shared everything. So the the website that they have, the uh, astromechbuilders.net, their website is full of everything from, hey, if you want to start building here, read this, and they've got articles written by people, um, and then you know codes for Arduino that they've written for controlling it with an old Xbox remote or an old PlayStation remote. They, they put all that up there. They put wiring schematics up there. Uh, the blueprints for building, I mean, they share everything, which is, is really unique. As a matter of fact, one of the coolest things is uh, in the most recent uh, Star Wars, the Force Awakens film, the R2-D2 or Astromix that were in the movie were actually built by fans of the movie. Oh, that is Kathleen so Kennedy. cool. Yeah, it, she, she uh, they reached out, they hired a, a couple of fans, and those fans were just part of the Astromech Builders Club, and next thing you know, they're actually making the props for the film, which was which was a great way of Lucasfilm giving back to the, the fans that have supported him for so many years. So it's a really good group to be a part of, for sure. So when you're building one of these, when, when you're building a droid, what what is the most challenging part of the, of the build process? Um, I would guess it's probably different for everyone. Um, but I guess if it's speaking just for me, uh, the, the, the most challenge I had was with my particular build recently, the amount of 
life I wanted to give and personality. And, you know, I can, I can work with the builders club and I can get, you know, the schematics and everything else to build the Arduino functionality and all the programming has already been done. And basically for me, it's just put it together. Um, but when that came to the dome, I wanted something else. I wanted something different. It, it needed to stand out. So I, I have never really programmed with the Arduino from scratch. And the big challenge for me was assembling that, doing all the wiring, getting all the circuits in there correctly, getting all the LEDs I wanted, and then programming that in a language that I'm a little unfamiliar with. I, I'm an AV uh, programmer by trade, which is all not to get too too nerdy here, but it's a ladder logic programming. And and getting into Arduino is a little bit different because it's a process, right? So the processor reads from top down. So to make it look like everything's happening at the same time became overly complicated to me. And, and actually, that's how I reached out to your website was to try to find some way of understanding it simply so that I could make something complex. Yeah, and I, I saw your uh, I saw your photos of your I guess semi finished project at this point. Yeah, we're I'm about ninety uh, percent. I've got two weeks. It's got to be done in two weeks because uh, uh, my father's coming through uh, Denver where I live, and uh, he's going to be heading to Florida shortly thereafter. So if it's not done in two weeks, it's not going to be done for the show because the show is in April. So we got to get it get to get it moving. Deadlines are a great motivator. <laughs> they are indeed, indeed. No, but it looked neat. The uh, the video you sent with the the LEDs moving and and everything. It looks looks like you've uh, made some progress. That's awesome. Yeah, absolutely. So this smuggler's room, your website. Everybody uh-huh. listening should definitely go check it out. It's the photography is really neat on it. I was quite impressed. But um, so is the smuggler's room a room itself? Also, is that going to be some type of like prop room or yeah? So it's uh, uh, my poor wife, I have to say, right out of the gate, because several years back for my birthday, she said, well, what do you want for your birthday? I said, I'd, I'd kind of like to build a spaceship in the basement. Have you be okay with that? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, it was, it, she kind of, you know, she had to process for a while. And uh, she said, well, you know, you can have this corner. If you, you know, down here in the corner, it, you know, you can do some weird things if you want. And uh, what that translated into was, the entire basement has become my domain and uh, I wanted it something more than just a room where a 39 year old guy that's collected star Wars stuff for his whole life, put everything on a shelf. I wanted something that, you know, when you walked in there, it was, it was something like you would get out of a movie set, a film set. And so early on, I had done a couple of renditions of things down there and built some weird stuff and, you know, saved a lot of plastic parts and sprayed them and glued them on the wall. And and then as that kind of happened, it, it this hobby turned into finding ways to build props and prop replicas and, and kind of take it to another level. So the, the smuggler's room, you know, Han Solo was a smuggler and that kind of whole thing is where the name came from. But it became kind of this way that I spent time with my father and we you know, we, we built props together and we came up with stuff from scratch. And so now in the recent couple of years, I've kind of stripped the room back and started over with, you know, more experience in building, um, more experience with electronics and how to program that. So I'm hoping with here within the next year or so uh, through the website, I can kind of take people on a journey of this. And while I'm building these things, I want to be able to make molds and cast products from, from that space that if someone found interest and they wanted to use that in their own projects, you know, they'd be available, but at least this way people can view it from its beginnings and then see how it transforms and comes alive really. And the picture you have on the website, is that part of what you're working on then the um, it almost looks like a ceiling, I would say. Yeah, there's a, I built a, I guess it'd be a light fixture, um, but the entire ceiling has, you know, detail work and, and lighting built into it. And um, so, yeah, there's there's elements on the website now. There's If you click on the actual room, it, it kind of takes you to a work in progress page. And that's really because at this point, I, I stripped a lot of it out 
and now I'm kind of starting from the beginning. So in the next coming months, once I get through the droid build and, and off to the celebration show, once we get into the early summer, uh, we should, I should have a lot of stuff happening down there. Is your basement the place where you find the space to actually build the stuff? Or do you have like a outhouse that you use? Or is, it seems like some of this stuff would take some space to put together. And Yeah, actually what it was is I, I politely once again asked my wife if she wouldn't mind parking the car outside and never using the garage. <laughs> uh, and I do live in Colorado, so I do have to uh, do a fair amount of ice scrape and snow removal for her before she goes to work in the morning. But uh, we converted our two-car garage into a full, full-blown full workshop. Um I, I come from a long line of, of master carpenters. Both my father and my grandfather were both uh, could build just about anything that you ever asked for out of wood. So growing up, I, I learned, you know, a lot of woodworking skills and that's translated, translated really nicely into, you know, prop building. So the, the workshop kind of does all facets, everything from woodwork to, to working with plastics to making molds, um, and then there's a large space for, you know, doing wiring and electronics. And then I have a little spot in the, in the house that I'm allowed to have for some small electronic work. So I don't get a whole lot of dust and whatnot on it, but, but yeah, I, I begged for, uh, for a space and it's a good thing she has bad taste in men. That's all I can say. <laughs> <laughs> that is so cool. Does your father have a similar type setup then? Has he got a space he works into or is he just hang out with you and do it? No, yeah, he does. We unfortunately he he lives in uh, Lubbock, Texas, so there's a little bit of dif- distance between us. But uh, I think the last few times he's been here, there's been a little jealousy. I got a little a little more space than he does. He he claims he's going to build a a large shop one day just to kind of trump me, but that's <laughs> that's okay. I'll I'd be happy for him to have some more space. That's awesome. So you're getting ready to ship out here pretty soon, then. And and uh, I mean, will you put this? I mean, you're going to just drive down? Is that how you're going to get the Get your, your stuff down. The great thing about these droids, the size of them, if you put them in a seat, you can strap a seatbelt on them and they ride, <laughs> they ride perfectly like that. I have to get some photos on the website of that because it's, it's hysterical to see them like that. But yes. uh, we'll drive them around the show and, you know, the, the kids, is, it's the, the best part is when those little kids see these things, the full size or not, they just, it's just, it's something else for the kids. Man, that is so cool. Well, hey, Brian, thanks so much uh, for taking the time to share what you're up to with with me. It was fascinating learning about and makes me want to fly out in two weeks and go go to the show. Um, But uh, yeah, it's just it's so interesting to to learn about this stuff and learn about what sounds like a pretty vibrant community, um, you know, around around this. It's that's just exciting. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me on. It amazes me, the groups of people who do cool things that I'm just totally unaware of. And what's neat to me is how you can get a group of people together and they can share in their passion and their interest and really learn a lot. And I think that it's almost a lesson to us. If there's something you want to get interested in, or if there's something you want to get better at, there's undoubtedly a group of people who's kind of coming together to work on that thing and man if you can get out and meet some of those people and rub some elbows and you're probably going to learn a lot and you might make some friends in the process so in the show we mentioned brian's website thesmugglersroom.com it's a neat website and if you're interested in what brian's up to you'll definitely learn more about it there but hey thanks a ton for listening if you enjoyed the show i'd love for you to subscribe rate and review the show on itunes that'd be wonderful and if there's any topics you would like covered please feel free to leave a comment in iTunes. Let us know your thoughts, or you can also send us an email at podcast at programmingelectronics.com. Well, hey, I hope the very best for you, and I hope the rest of your day, night, whatever it might be, is great. See you next week. This show is produced by Programming Electronics Academy, an online technology education company. We exist to help you create the technology you want in your life. If you are interested in learning more about Arduino, we welcome you to sign up for our free Arduino Crash Course, a 12-part video series with accompanying written lessons designed to teach the basics of programming Arduino. To register for the course, simply text your email address to 440-701-5311, or you can visit Programming electronics.com and sign up there.